I'm George Flynn, and you're watching In-Depth TV, where today we're going to talk about focus. That's right. And you can see the picture here is in focus. If your television or your uh, internet or whatever it is is tuned up, but we're going to talk about a different type of focus that's focusing your thoughts. And how do we get into this? Well, if you've ever noticed, things that you focus on multiply. Whatever you train your mind on multiplies. <clears throat> that's right. If you focus on the bad stuff, the negative stuff, yes, you'll get more bad stuff, more negative stuff. That's the way it works. It's in the Bible. You know, that what you think about, that's what happens. I'm paraphrasing quite a bit. But it is true. What you put your mind to, and you, a lot of people say, well, put your mind to it. And that's what multiplies. So you can focus on the good things or you can focus on the bad things. Now, that's simple enough. It's your choice. You know, nobody is forcing you to think one way or the other. And you say, well, I, that's the way I am. That's just the way I am. It doesn't have to be that way all the time. Some of the time it can be that way, but you can catch yourself thinking about what you're thinking about and change it if you want to. You can choose, I don't want to think about that anymore. And you don't have to do it. Now let's get a little deeper into the topic. Your focus makes things, it, it makes you aware of things. Like if you focus on, uh, let's pick a, an orange car. If you say, well you say, well there are not many orange cars, or pick a green car or whatever color, pick a color, purple car. If you go out and you put your mind to a purple car, all of a sudden you'll see a purple car, and then another one, and then another one. Now, is that, does that mean that you're thinking about a purple car made them come along? No. What it means is you were unaware of them otherwise. You, they were there all the time. You just didn't notice them. Now, all of the bad things, they're all there all the time. But you have now noticed them. So you see them coming up, you say, everything's bad. Okay, all the good things are there all the time. And you can focus on them and more of them show up, just like more purple cars show up. So that's the power <clears throat> of focusing on all of these things in your life. Okay, it gets a li little bit trickier, as we say. If you watch the news, most newscasts have the bad things first. And in the newsroom, there is a saying, if it bleeds, it leads. In other words, the worse the story is, they put it at the front of the newscast to get you engaged to watch the newscast. Now, why is this? As we were coming along thousands of years ago, our what's called reptilian brain has got to be aware of danger, anything that's dangerous. You hear a rustling in the bush, or you see something move out of your peripheral vision, and you say, uh, this thing could be out there, it could be harmful, we're talking about years and years and years ago. It could be harmful to me, it could eat me, or it might actually be my dinner. So I better pay attention to this. But our reptilian brain wants us to survive. So we notice things that are possibly harmful to us. Now that was years ago, years and years ago. And now we still have that fight or flight, a fight or flight reaction to danger. 
We're either going to fight this danger or we're going to run away from it. Either one gets us out of danger if we run away or confronting the danger if we're going to fight it. So if we focus on that kind of thing, we're going to find more and more danger. Now, we don't want to be oblivious to any possible problem or harm that could come to us, but we want to put it in pro proper perspective. If you're sitting at your, in your home and you're safe and the, the TV is on, the internet's on, or something comes up, breaking news, you immediately look at it because something could be happening to you that you don't even know about. And you want to pay attention because you want to survive. And what happens is you, your adrenaline is released, your heart races, you breathe a little faster, you know, your blood pressure goes up a little bit. What's happening? What's happening? I've got to either fight it or run away from it. Well, in this day and time, no, you're safe. You're in your house. The heat or air conditioning is on. You're comfortable. You've got plenty to eat in the, in the freezer or the refrigerator. You're okay, but your body doesn't know that. So you have focused on the negative and your body has responded as if it were absolutely true. And that is what gets you into trouble. Okay, if you focus on the good things and go find the good things, your body focuses on the good things also and acts as if, there is that term again, as if it's happening. And all of a sudden you get all the positive serotonin and norepinephrine and all the chemicals, that, normal chemicals that go on in your brain and you feel happy. You say, this is great. So why don't more people focus on the good than focus on the bad? Well, let's go back Remember, we talked about that reptilian brain. First thing the reptilian brain wants you to do is survive. And once it's got you into survival and you have survived it, then it wants you to go into thrive. And that's where all of the happiness comes in when you're thriving, when you're doing well. So we keep our focus down on the survival part of it when we need to get up into the thriving part of it. <clears throat> we're relatively safe. We're well fed. We're well clothed. We're relatively safe. And we should be focusing on thriving. Thriving. The best things are coming to us. We've got to keep our mind on what is good stuff coming to us. And I use the term stuff. Good things coming to us. Good situations good times, good people. And then we can celebrate. Now, do you celebrate? Do you actually celebrate? A lot of people will take, let's say, take a test. And it's, say, 10 questions. And you get eight of them right and two of them wrong. Which ones do you focus on? You know good and well. You focus on the two that you got wrong. You, you know, and the, the healthy thing to do, and what about the eight you got right? Oh, I got those. You don't think much of it, but you think about it and worry about it, the two that you got wrong. Here's the healthy thing to do. You, you focus on the eight that you got right, and then you look at those and say, I got that right, that right, that right, and you got eight of them right, but what about the two you got wrong? Well, let's see why I got those why well, I might have missed those. It seems, and you might say to yourself, it seems highly unlikely that an intelligent person like me could misunderstand that question or not know the correct answer. And let's see what the correct answer was or did I misunderstand it? So you go through one question and you find out what the correct answer was and you, you say, I wonder why I didn't get it. Oh, that's why I didn't get it. I missed that decimal point or I, I took this and you find your error. Then you go to the second question that you might have 
you know, given the answer that was not expected. I won't call it a wrong answer. But you, you find that second question and you go through that one and you say, well, I won't make that mistake again. And then you quit worrying about it. You know, worry doesn't help you. The, you know what worry is? Worry is nothing more than negative goal setting. You focus your mind on what you're afraid is going to happen. And 99, you know, there are all these quotes about worry. 99% of the things you worry about don't happen. So you're wasting your time with worry, but why are you doing it? Well, you think about, you think if you worry enough that the bad stuff won't come, well, remember, we talked about focus. You worry on, you think about what you're worried about, and it's in the Bible, I promise you. That which I greatly feared has come upon me. I think it's Job that said that. That which I had greatly feared has come upon me. So whatever you greatly fear, you focus on it, you seem to draw it to you. You don't really. You seem to draw it to you. You're focused on it, you're looking for little parts of it, and you seem to put this story together that that which you had greatly feared had come upon you. So I hope you understand where I'm taking you with this. If you think of bad things, if your mind is, is somewhere in the wrong place, all you gotta do is say a few things. One is cancel, cancel. Say to yourself, and you, you don't have to say it out loud. You can say to yourself, I'm thinking about this bad thing that can ha happen. Cancel, cancel, and then think about the good thing that could happen. Well, I'm going down the steps. I could fall down the steps. Cancel, cancel. I'm going down the steps. I'm perfectly balanced. I have no problem. I will get down those steps just fine. That is a trivial example. But I'm sure you've said, well, I'm driving on rainy streets. I might slip and slide and, and I might have a wreck. Cancel, cancel. I'm driving. I'm in total control. I'm going to drive a little slower. I'm going to get to my destination in just, you know, no problem. And I will get there alive, healthy, alert, and smiling. And that's the last thing. When you can talk about worry, it's hard to smile when you're worried. It's very hard. So that's one thing you can tell your body. You remember your mind, you've said cancel, cancel. And you smile like that, even if it's a fake smile. And your body says, uh, wait a minute, uh, he's worried about these things. I thought he was, he said cancel, cancel. And now he's smiling or she's smiling. Well, things must be okay. I, I don't know why, but they must be okay. So you've said cancel, cancel. You've gotten the thought out of your head and you've smiled, even if it's a fake smile. You go ahead and smile and all of a sudden you feel better. And when you feel better, you act better around other people and you act better to yourself. And you do better on your job or on your hobby. And you do better around the house. And you do better uh, at your church, at your play, wherever you are. You do better because you feel better and you are almost, almost in the zone. When you're smiling, you're thinking right, you're in that zone. Now you may not be in the zone as much as golfers or basketball players, but you can get there. You can get there by focusing on what you want, not what you don't want. I'm Dr. George Flynn, and I really appreciate you being here with me and discussing this thing about how to focus your mind on the good things. We'll see you next time.